Hello guys, welcome back. And in this video, I will be creating a Databricks environment or Databricks workspace via my uh, uh, email account, right? And as I mentioned in the previous videos that for some of the uh, tutorials for some of the you know chapters i will be using a free version free community edition version and for some of the advanced features i will be using a premium version okay because you know in free version we do not have everything available right so let's say to understand how workflow works right to understand you know uh, how delta live table works so i need a premium version for that right but going you know uh, to just start it i will use a community edition version which is absolutely free you do not need to add a credit card or debit card something you just need your email id gmail or whatever it is right so why i'm saying because you know uh, why why you want to spend money right do not spend money on learning these things right so you can learn uh, everything for free and when i use workflow when i use you know a delta live tables or advanced feature of data breaks right at that time you can uh, you can upgrade to premium if you are required otherwise you can, if you are still working somewhere and you are using data breaks then you can practice on your company organization you know company's workspace right so chalo, let's see how we can first of all you know uh, enroll in a free edition version right so for that you know you have to write here data breaks data bricks sign in something right so i will uh, open this website right you can see you know there is a uh, they are asking to sign in man, but i need to sign up right so i will click here and here you need to pass some information so you know here what i will be doing i will be using another email so let's say i am using here my company email that is geekcoders.co.in you can also enroll or you can also fill here your email id your personal email id right geekcoders agapajabhati ceo okay everything is seems okay now click on loading now you can see over here they are asking for two things first you know professional use we can you know integrate this database with the uh, you know with uh, with an, an, any 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 cloud like aws microsoft azure or google cloud platform but if you want to use for your personal use right uh, i would recommend to go with the get started with community edition version because here you will not need to pay you i mean you do not need to pay any single rupee or dollars right so i will go for that first and moving forward i will upgrade my database workspace to the premium version right so let's see how we can do that okay they are asking that check your email so i'll go over here and ideally i should have here let me refresh it yep you can see i got this email right so what i will do i will click on this link and here it will ask me to change the password right so what i'll do i will just add here my password okay reset the password okay now this is the workspace or the ui of the database for the premium sorry for the community edition version right so you can see over here we have this workspace and first of all we have you know this data science and engineering and machine learning like we have two types over here data science engineering and machine learning so we will be using a data science and engineering works workspace i mean for these uh, databricks i will be using for the data science and engineering so i will be choosing over here right so what if if i choose this any changes so this basically for you know uh, experiments models running like for that so i'm not gonna in I'm, I'm 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 not going to that direction i will use for data science and engineering you can see over here this is the you know a workspace you can see we have users so currently i am the user so you know uh, i i should have this uh, uh, you know a kind of folder and inside that i can do some uh, work let's say to create a notebook folders or other 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 stuff right now this is the shared one right we can create over here same thing the notebook folder anything 
right and this is the recent tab right uh, suppose you created some databricks notebook or you did something so it will pop up over here this is the search uh, you know if you want to search anything in the workspace you can use this this is the catalog in simple term you can see over here this is the database and the table inside this i will be having some databases and then i will be having here tables corresponding to that now this is a compute so compute means a cluster or uh, a machine where my uh, you know my processing will happen right just for a simple term you can assume right and then we have this job compute so basically we have two type of so currently we have two type of clusters so the machine one is all purpose and second is job compute right and here this is the workflow so you can see over here to use the workflows i have to upgrade the databricks i mean uh, i have i have to up upgrade this databricks addition version to the premium version right so i'll not going to that direction first right so let me come back over here and here you can see uh, you know uh, basically if you worked on jupyter notebook or the google collab notebook something right so this is a similar uh, you know similar thing right here you know if i am saying that i need to work something you know on my workspace right basically i am the suppose i am working over here so i can create some notebook so let's say i am creating here some notebooks right so uh, you know it will take some time here this is the title of the notebook so i can change it let's say i am just writing here uh, testing something like that you can provide over the name and then you can actually choose the language which language i i mean you need to write it right so you can see you can change the language to python sql scala r so basically we can we can run and we can write here any code python sql scala scala or r so let's say i want to use python by default it is python so you know you do not need to do anything just to write simple python let's say i am saying here hello okay and via this method via this button i have i mean i we, we can we can run this notebook so currently we do not have a cluster uh, attached right so you can see over here uh, we can create a cluster we can create a cluster like this also and there is another way to go to compute option and create compute okay now you can see for the community addition we will be having a zero workers uh, right and only one driver and which is of 15.3 gb memory two cores and one dbu so i can uh, you know create a cluster and you can choose over here a dbr right database runtime version so you can see i mean we are i mean if i choose 12.2 so here the scala 2.12 version will be used and spark 3.3.2 version will be used so since we are in 2024 i will not recommend to use the legacy versions or the previous versions the older versions i will be using over here let's say 15.1 yeah i can use 15.1 also and if you want you can use this 14.2 also totally depends on you but i would recommend not to use this uh, you know uh, below 4, 14 right because there are many new features which which got added in the latest version of dbr so i would recommend if you are watching this video now i mean today so use the latest version maybe when you are when when you are watching this video it is like 2025 2026 right so maybe at, at that time we may have 16.1 version 70.1 version so always choose the latest one okay so i'll just choose the latest one over here and here you can see this is a kind of spark config this is you know by default came right if you want to add something you can add it we'll talk about this thing in near future but currently you can assume like this right and uh, you know i'm just going to create it let's see whether it will it will create or not now you can see over here in, in this uh, compute uh, option you can see instance is uh, you know us west 2c right and this is jdb jdbc odbc connection right is suppose if i want to connect this uh, you know if i want to connect this database cluster uh, uh, to outside like in excel or anywhere right so i can use this these configuration or connection strings right and also you can see we have this notebook sesh, notebook option here you know whatever the notebook is attached to this cluster it will pop up over here right this is the libraries libraries means you know suppose you are installing some uh, library in python like some package like you know pandas package or you know uh, you know date time package or some other package right then you can actually uh, it those packages will or modules will pop up over here 
this is the event log okay what you are doing so you can see i created this so event is creating and and created by whom you know created by me so info at the rate geekcoders.co.in this is a spark ui you know when we do some you know uh, processing so those things will come over here this is the driver logs right so you can see uh, since uh, since you know uh, we i mean since the cluster is not up so it is not showing anything right and all these things are the other stuff you can see i mean once this uh, cluster uh, is up then i will show you what you know what are the uh, things comes over here right so we'll wait for some times and here you can see we have this testing uh, notebook right which we have created and now i can attach to this cluster geek coders right so it will take few seconds sometimes or some you know, see to start the cluster it will take at least two to three minutes right it's not like you just hit the button and it will pop up no it's not like that now you can see it is up now and if i run this right if i run this then you can see over here it is running and it takes some times you know to install some predefined libraries or modules so you, we have to wait at least for two to three minutes to set up to set up the clusters right okay so and here also you can see we have this options in the file like if i want to rename it i can rename it if i want to delete it i want i can delete if i want to export it then you can also export it like you know the in four formats dvc archive source file source file means if i if i you know uh, export it it will it will export with dot py if i'm using here python notebook if i'm using here some other notebooks other language sql so maybe it will import it as dot sql this ipython notebook and html and you know this version history you know if i click over here then you can see it will have the versions like you know uh, what i did today let's say tomorrow if i'm coming so i can have the versions also i can see and all these things are the select code to note if i want to comment it so i can comment it right uh, this is something else version history this is a variable explorer so i can have a variables right so all these things we'll be talking about in near future when we go to when when we manipulate the data when we do a real processing so it is done right and you know you can see this is view this is edit if i want to paste the cell something like that if i want to format the notebook format the cell i can do it you know okay now if i go to compute again and you can see if i choose this uh, cluster right now you can see as i mentioned right here it will come that which notebook is attached to it and what is the location when last command ran and what is the status this is idle for now because the processing has been done this is the library session right this is the if you want to install anything so you can install via workspace file path py py this is for pip right and uh, let's say i want to install pandas so you can directly write here pandas like that okay sometime you know and if you want to uh, uh, install a specify uh, uh, version then you can put it over here like this okay currently i don't have so i'm just you know uh, not doing it maven this is scan this is from DB, dbfs suppose if you have any jar file or the wheel package then you can install via that okay now very good so we'll see it you know uh, in coming videos this is event log so you can see i have created it it is running and now driver is healthy this is the spark ui so okay you can see we have this job stages you know uh, storage right so everything you know you can see over here right we have many things uh, many, many things we have right so we can see in coming videos and this is logs right and this is spark compute ui master so we have to open a new tab we'll see what does it mean and what it shows so you can see over here we have everything you know when we ran the job you know something like that it will come over here so you can see we have stages also right so this is default pool name something like that it's coming right so we will see in detail right so i just wanted to give an overview of this databricks environment or the workspace so that you will be uh, familiar with that right and if you want to terminate it you can terminate terminate means if you want to close the uh, vm if you want to stop the vm not close right so i can terminate it like that 
and also what is a very good thing of databix that you know you can write here a sql command let's say i want to write a sql command so i can i have to either you can choose here sql command right right or see when i choose into sql it converted like it added like percent sql right so the same thing we can do so i can also write here percent sql suppose if i want to write some other code like i can use maybe r or if i use scala right so it will come over here see it has been changed right so likewise we can write in any language okay so let me just cancel all this stuff this is not needed and what else it's it is what else uh, no i think i have covered almost all the things of databricks and moving forward we will be discussing in details about each of the uh, uh, things right and uh, okay that was not there okay so you can see over here we have this database and tables if i click in create table right so you can see this is a dbfs target directive what does it mean database has their own storage area that is called dbfs database file system okay so if you want to save any file file you can use this location by default it is file store tables and then we have we, we can create our own folders or we can you know dump those files right and either you know if you want to connect to s3 bucket you can do it and we have another uh, uh, sources right right like you know snowflake jdbc kafka if you want to connect like that we can use with this so if you see if i am using jdbc then if i click on this create table in notebook button then you can see every code is uh, pop up over here like you know we, you, we do not need to do anything right so you can see all these all these things are present so we just have to replace the values right so likewise you know we can do it and going forward you will see and if you want to publish the notebook if you want to give this notebook to anyone uh, right let's say i want to share with you right so i will do here publish and you can see over here everything this link will remain valid for six months only so i can click on this i can i can copy it i can copy it and if i paste it over here right so it will automatically you know open the notebook without any logging so see i mean i i i, I did not log in right uh, even though i can see it correct so this is the way you know uh, why i am why i you know choose the community edition because you do not need to pay anything to learn and once you learn everything then you can you know go with the higher versions or you know the pvm versions right because if you if you forget to close or stop the cluster then it will charge you a lot okay it will charge you a lot okay so chalo thank you bye bye and uh, we'll meet you in the next lecture where i will be seeing some details of this database and to create a data frames hdd and everything right so thank you bye bye